Hello. For some reason, I decided to put on my academic attire and be Dr. Weiss here for a moment. Maybe it's because we're uh, dealing with the standing your ground issues, and these are big macroethical issues that have implications not only on us as individuals in the firm, but also have implications for the firm and extending out to stakeholders that maybe are not directly involved with the firm. Uh, customers, other stakeholders such as community residents, society as a whole, these implications extend far out beyond just the impact upon me individually. Earlier in this course, you were asked to identify a particular standing your ground topic that you're going to use for your uh, project. Uh, but today I'd like to focus on all these topics and have a brief discussion that will lead to you guys having uh, some interaction on the various macro ethical issues. Um, I just came up with several. These are in the news, and so I want to identify how they're in the news now and then allow you guys to take positions um, for and against particular items. Okay, so let's go to the list. Oh, here's a hot one right now. Letting the marketplace set the price of prescription drugs, even if the result is that many persons who need the drug will be unable to afford it, is both bus a business both a good business practice and ethical behavior. Where do you stand? Now, this is particularly interesting right now because um, EpiPen has been uh, in the news. Uh, the manufacturers of EpiPen have chosen to adjust the prices significantly and have made a lot of profits as a result of it. Good business practice? Ethical? Where do you stand? Not particularly on the situation of EpiPen, but on the general principle of the pharmaceutical companies being able to price their drugs what the market will bear, even though some people who might need the drug will not be able to afford it. Number two, using contract workers as a way of lowering total payroll costs by avoiding per, uh, paying benefits is both good business practice and ethical behavior. Uh, as a result of the Affordable Care Act, there have been a lot of companies who have decided to keep their um, full-time employment ranks uh, lessened so that they're not bearing the cost of, of health insurance. Um, there's been the emergence of this part-time market where a lot of people have been uh, hired as contract workers, as temporary workers, not necessarily permanent. So they're self-employed, um, not permanent to a particular firm. There's the emergence of the gig economy, where individuals are serving as um, kind of sole proprietors, providing gigs or short-term employment services for a lot of different organizations. So this is a time when the definitions of employment status are changing quite dramatically from contract workers, part-time workers, gig workers. So where do you stand? on the idea of contract workers being used to lower the total payroll costs of a firm by not having the expectation to pay for benefits, is that good an ethical business practice? The third item, receiving high executive bonuses based upon dramatically improving or turning around a company's performance and stock price, even when the primary strategies used are to lay off long-term workers is both good business practice and ethical business behavior. It's not uncommon at all for a business to have to downsize and restructure, and individuals who have been employed there maybe for decades find themselves um, maybe in their 50s or early 60s, not quite ready re to retire, but the firm feels like their services are no longer necessary. Maybe they've not been adding value to the value chain. The organization has to get a little bit leaner, a little bit meaner, it has to save money, it has to become uh, more effective and efficient in the marketplace. And as a result, an executive comes in, sees these realities, makes the changes that he or she believes are necessary, and many people who have been at the firm for a long time lose their job. Is that ethical? Is that appropriate business practice? The fourth, it is a good business practice and ethical behavior for tobacco companies to heavily promote e-cigarettes. The tobacco industry historically, uh, since the 1960s, has had uh, mandates placed upon them and sometimes may be self-imposed upon themselves that will uh, minimize the promotion of their product. 
Uh, there have been lawsuits in many states that have held uh, cigarette companies accountable for the harm of their product. As a result, there's been agreements with the federal government that limits the promotion, but them being good businesses are finding alternative revenue sources. And e-cigarettes is a new product that has come on the marketplace. These e-cigarettes are not necessarily um, regulated currently, um, and therefore there is freedom for the firm to promote them. Uh, and they have not, and these tobacco firms are looking for growth markets and they've not necessarily self-imposed restrictions on promotion. Therefore, they see growth potential for the e-cigarettes. Is it ethical and is it a good business practice for these tobacco companies to develop this emerging market, come up with program or products that serve this emerging market and use promotional techniques that they would not use for the traditional products to try to grow their market share. You decide, stand your ground. Number five, when businesses are, are operating outside the United States, is it good business practice and ethical behavior uh, to participate in forms of bribery to facilitate business deals if the custom of the country allows and expects that practice? Uh, this is a challenge. Um, in, in the United States, there's specific laws prohibiting bribery. There are also international treaties that have been signed on by most, most developed companies, excuse me, countries that suggest that quid pro quo, or if you do this, I'll do this for you, uh, deals, especially if there's personal favors being offered, are inappropriate. Uh, but we know that in many countries that is the norm, that is the expectation for facilitating business enterprise. Okay, what if I'm a business person and I want to penetrate a particular market that's outside the United States and I know that that's the way it's done and I know that other individuals and companies have done it even though there is a United States and maybe even international uh, law that suggests it's inappropriate. I'm selling a good product, uh, a legitimate product or service. That's the way business is done. Do I need to respect their customs or do I need to follow the law? Stand your ground. The next one, paying bank executives millions of dollars in annual bonuses soon after they've received penalties of, ooh, after the firm received penalties for admitted fraudulent sales practices is both ethical business behavior and good business practice. Hmm, has this ever happened before? Well, we've had the allegations of fraudulent uh, sales practices that came out of the financial crisis in the 2008 year. Uh, banks and other organizations, some of them even governmental, uh, some of them actually um, allegedly uh, had sales practices that st stimulated a lot of sales. But those companies and those banks, maybe those that were too big to fail, uh, received a bailouts from the federal government. Uh, more recently, we've had a very well-known bank that had fraudulent business practices, but it also business sales practices that it's admitted to, and a CEO uh, has stepped down as a result of it. But there's been bonuses paid, uh, not only to that person, but also to a person who was in charge of the division where the sales practices uh, were, were discovered. Is that ethical? Is that legal? Is that appropriate business practice? And then finally, is it good business practice for, and ethical business behavior for the firm to cut costs to improve profitability by shutting down operations in a home community, terminating hundreds of workers, and then moving the business to a low wage location in another country? Uh, that's something that is of an issue here in Indiana currently. And there's a company called Carrier that makes air conditioning units and that company has 1400 workers in the Indianapolis area but they have decided that they're going to in order to increase their profitability they're going to pick up their operations and they're going to move the operations to Mexico people in Mexico are going to benefit from those jobs people in Indiana are going to lose their jobs obviously the people in Indiana are not very happy about this and there's been political pressure even by the president elect to try to keep those jobs here in Indiana Okay, but businesses have a responsibility for profitability and they have stakeholders uh, that extend beyond just local communities and they have stockholders that want a good return on investment. What's the business to do? Stand your ground.
So on those topics here, you're going to be able to select one of them and you're going to be um, coming to a decision and you're going to be articulating a compelling moral argument for your position. You get to be the judge, put on the robe, be the judge, develop your decision and articulate it. For these other ones though, maybe um, there are people in classes that are taking positions and we'll be able to have a discussion about those in, in week six or seven. But for right now, I want you to post um, a position that you hold for one of these arguments other than the one that you're uh, doing for your paper and one against. And let's have a little online discussion about it. Sound fun? Go for it. Stand your ground. Bye.